JJ Buckets here. You already know that. You're on the channel. Of course you are. <laughs> and with that being said, it's that sweet, sweet time again because we are going to talk basketball. It's helping him and helping me and helping our whole team. Beginning of the, uh, this is hot breath on my neck. Now, for today's video, I thought it'd be interesting to look at some of these rumors that have been floating around the NBA circles of late and discuss the possibility of the Raptors potentially moving up from the four spot and jumping like a pick or two or maybe three uh, in front from where they are now. Obviously, there have been rumors that the Pistons, the Rockets, excuse me, and the Cavs are all open to the idea of trading their pick. And I think that really opens the door for a team like Toronto that is really, you know, one, two, three spots away from these teams to really move up and get the guy that they want. So it's gonna be a buying or selling type of video on whether or not these rumors have any weight to them and the chances of the Raptors moving up, you know, with one of these teams. So we're gonna look at each of them and evaluate accordingly. With all that being said, Let's hop in the video. So first off, let's talk about the number one pick. And very obviously, when you're talking about the number one pick, you're talking about Cade Cunningham, right? I mean, for the most part, I think it seems like he has been the consensus number one pick in this year's draft the entire way. He's viewed as a generational talent. And for some weird logic defying reason, it doesn't seem like the Pistons GM is completely sold on the idea of staying there and picking Cade. There's been talk that, you know, trading that pick is an option for the Pistons. And on top of that, you know, there's also been rumors where the Pistons are talking about the fact that Mobley and Green are also on the table, that they haven't zeroed in on Cade yet as that pick. And when it comes to these rumors and when it comes to the Raptors' chances of moving up into this slot to select, in all likelihood, Kate Cunningham, I'm going to have to sell. I think it is ridiculous that we are even discussing the idea of trading this pick. And I'd like to think that this is just smoke screens, although I don't understand why the team sitting at number one needs to put up smoke screens about who they're taking. It's weird to me. Nonetheless, you have a chance for a perceived generational talent here at the number one slot, unless the Pistons know something everybody else doesn't about Kate Cunningham and how good he is. There's no chance in hell they should logically pass up on the idea of taking him. I like just if you have a chance to take a guy that sets your team up for the next decade and a half, like pretty confidently why would you give up that opportunity? It, it seems stupid, and it seems stupid that these rumors even exist. I feel like this is one of those things that, you know, the original statement was probably taken a little bit out of context and blown up for, obviously, headlines. And with that being said, I really don't see the Pistons trading out. And frankly, if they do, I think a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder are really in the best position to potentially go get that pick because Let's be real, the Thunder can throw like eight draft picks at the Pistons and not lose sleep over it. So, do I think the Raptors have a chance to move up to number one? I hate to say it because goddamn, I love me some Kate Cunningham, but I don't think this one's happening. The next one here is obviously for the number two position. We're going to talk about the Houston Rockets and the Rockets GM, Raphael Stone, I think that's his name. He says he hasn't ruled out the idea of potentially trading that pick. Now, when it comes to this one, I'm buying. Um, uh, spoiler. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely buying the rumors and buying, you know, in terms of the Raptors' opportunities to move up to this pick. I think, obviously, as much as all four of the top four in this year's draft are potential, you know, franchise-altering talents, I think there's at least a drop off in perception between the number one pick, which is Kate Cunningham, and anybody that comes at number two, which I think plays in the Raptors' favor. On top of that, what I really think plays in the Raptors' favor is they control obviously all of their future assets in terms of draft picks, which is a great position to be in in this case. And to move up from four to two isn't really a huge ask, and I don't think it would be a massive asking price. And the thing that I really like about this is, I feel like I've touched upon this before, but I'll say it again. Houston is in a position here where I think they want all the draft picks and all of the future capital that they can get. Obviously, they recouped the draft pick haul that they did for James Harden, but let's be honest, a lot of those picks, 
if not most of those picks are gonna be pretty late selections. So in that regard, yeah, they got, what was it, four first round picks and four pick swaps, but at the same time, they're not high value. Here, you have a chance to get the Raptors high value pick and then get a couple of more picks potentially, um, maybe not a couple more, but you know what I mean, get more assets and then maybe package that together in the future to move up. This R Rockets roster, I don't know why that was a tongue twister, <laughs> uh, this roster for the Rockets is not impressive. There's not a whole lot of young talent here to build on, so I think they'll probably be looking to fill as many holes as they can, and I think the opportunity to secure extra assets while still picking in the top four would be huge for the Rockets, especially if they're not sold on anyone in particular from the two to four and they see them kind of around the same level. I think there's a great chance the Raptors can move up because in contrast, I imagine in this scenario, the Raptors would be sold on one specific player out of that two to four range. Maybe it's Jalen Green, maybe it's Evan Mobley, maybe it's Jalen Suggs, but I also think you can probably sit back at four and potentially get Suggs, so I don't think it would be him in that scenario. But nonetheless, if the Raptors are sold on somebody here, I think Houston is probably the team you're gonna wanna be bargaining with. I think there's a good opportunity here to strike a deal that satisfies both sides. And let's be honest with Masai Ujiri, it'll probably satisfy the Raptors a little bit more than it'll satisfy the Rockets. So I'm buying this one. I think there's a great chance here. I think if the Raptors are gonna jump uh, in the draft a couple of spots, I think it would be for the pick here. Lastly, we need to talk about the number three pick. And I think about the fact that, you know, the Raptors and the Cavs are the two teams that obviously jumped into the top four. And I think about how much easier life would be if the Raptors ended up at three and the Cavs ended up at four because then the Raptors could just take whoever's left on the board between Mobley and Green and probably be pretty satisfied with it. It would have been such a better scenario, but alas, the draft gods were kind, but not that kind. <laughs> so in this scenario here, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers have apparently talked about the idea of trading that number three pick and in particular the rumor is apparently that they would want to package it together with Colin Sexton and potentially ship him out of town. So if they're coming, if that's coming as a combo deal um, in this scenario, no matter what, where the Cavs want to, you know, move the number three but they're moving that specifically with Colin Sexton, that maybe raises a few more questions for the Raptors in terms of their willingness to do the deal. Obviously Sexton is still a good young player with potentially some more upside to grow into a player you like, um, but obviously you have to surrender more assets and in particular I think the name that obviously gets tossed on the board here is Fred Van Vliet and whether or not you'd be wanna, uh, excuse me, whether or not you'd wanna be giving him up in a deal that potentially involves Colin Sexton. And whether or not I'm buying or selling this one and the Raptors, you know, chances of moving up to the three, this is a tough one. I'm gonna absolutely cop out and I'm gonna say I'm gonna hold. So I'm not buying or selling, but I'm holding because I do think Sexton has a really interesting skill set. I think he can definitely get you some instant offense and he is promising in his own way. He's still young, he's coming on his rookie deal naturally, which means you would probably need to pay him soon and you can see that as either a good thing or a bad thing because yeah you're getting him on his rookie deal and you're still gonna have control over that for at least one more year but at the same time you know do you want to shell out money to pay Colin Sexton I think that's where the discussion here really lies because I mean in this scenario it's literally a conversation to move up one pick <laughs> for the Raptors and it would be a situation obviously where you're really sold on the guy you could potentially get at three and not really sold on the guy that you could potentially get at four. Oh, you know, I feel like I'm almost talking myself out of it. <laughs> it in this scenario here, I think I'm more likely to lean to the idea that the Raptors probably wouldn't, you know, jump to three if they have to, you know, take back sex and surrender more assets for Colin there but I think there's still a chance, so I'm not entirely ruling it out. I think that, yeah, like I'm entirely on the fence about this one, so you can feel free and drop me a comment on, you know, whether or not 
you're buying or selling this one. That That's the name of the game here. So that's going to do for me today. What do you folks think? Do you think the Raptors should explore the idea of moving up a few spots and getting a potentially better talent than they would at the number four? Or do you think the guy that's going to be left at number four is good enough and there isn't a big enough difference between him and the top three that you think they should just stand pat? Hit the comment section. Give me your thoughts. Other than that, just a couple of quick updates on the channel. So this is going to be my video for the week. I am taking some much needed R&R &R <laughs> at the end of the week and going on like a mini, uh, I say vacation, but it's not really a vacation. It's just a little cottage getaway, but just nonetheless, very much so needed. Believe me, you. <laughs> Other than that, uh, regarding the draft profile videos, I know that's something that has been around on this channel for a while and for the most part is very well received. I may or may not only do like one more video, I think at this point, you know, with the Raptors being at number four, Scotty Barnes is really the only other name that I haven't talked about to this point that is worth talking about. Um, so he might be the last one in that series, but if you want to see me continue that series with, you know, potential second round picks, if that's something that you really want to watch, let me know. I'll keep doing it. <laughs> other than that, you know the usual drill like the video it does not take a lot of time and it helps you know youtube get the video out to a much bigger audience which is super appreciated by me speaking of bigger audiences shout out to everybody that watched that last video i think it as i record this it's at about like 5.3k now so welcome to everybody that's new here um and shout out to the ogs as usual that have always been here and have been here for a while with all that being said only thing left to say is subscribers am i right <laughs> Hit the button, just hit the button. Look at this disparity right here. What is this shit? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's gonna do for me today. I am out of here.